Hey guys, Wonder Hussy here up in Fernley, Nevada. It's Northern Nevada. I'm with my sister. We're setting off on a road trip across Northern Nevada to follow the trail of the Donner Party and also check out some hot springs along the way. There's a ton of hot springs in Northern Nevada and you can camp out at a lot of them. So we just set out, we just left the San Francisco Bay Area and we're going to a hot spring that I read about online called Kyle, like the name Kyle, K-Y-L-E. I'm not sure if it's actually still soakable. I think it might have been a one of those deals where it was a hot spring resort back in the day and now there's just crumbling foundations. I don't know if there's gonna be any pools or anything to soak in, but I think we're at least gonna be able to camp there. So worst case, we'll just have a beautiful night camping out in the desert. But before we head out there, we had to stop here in Fernley to gas up at my favorite gas station. That's right, I have a favorite gas station. It's the 76 here in Fernley that has that awesome gourmet deli inside. It's run by a couple from India that make fresh Indian food that is the bomb diggity. So we're gonna pick up some food and take that with us to eat at our campsite. So let's go in and get our food. Oh yeah, so good. We were gonna wait until we got to the hot spring to eat, but figured we might as well just stay here and eat it because they do have these picnic tables out front. And this way it'll still be nice and hot because we still have a two and a half hour drive ahead of us. Oh, I'm stuffed. <laughs> now it's time to get on the road and get to this hot spring. We gotta get there before it gets dark. Okay, wow, we made it out here and it is absolutely beautiful. Look at that full moon coming over the mountains and the temperature is absolutely perfect. It's a beautiful night. There's only one problem. There's these giant friggin' <laughs> jumping locust cicada type things everywhere and they're huge. I mean, I gotta try to figure out a way to do scale on these things. They're everywhere in the grass. Look, they're crawling on this wall. I'll try to put my finger next to one so you can see. Look how big that thing is. Yikes, oh God. Uh, yikers, man. I mean, I'm not really scared, but at the same time, <laughs> I mean, they're everywhere. In fact, I saw something else that was like a scene from a horror movie. Let me see if I can show you this. I mean, it's this beautiful desert scene and these, Beautiful prayer flag some hippie hung up, but it's just like friggin nightmare status. Look down there. They're all like swarming around down there, crawling out of all the cracks. This actually reminds me a lot of a hot spring I went to in Baja, California called Puerto Citos. So it's in a little artist colony called Puerto Citos. They're right on the uh, Sea of Cortez, so beautiful tidal hot spring, but very sulfurous and tons of bugs everywhere. Oh, reminds me a lot of this. Smells like it and there's bugs like it. Oh my God, look at this rock. They're everywhere all over this rock. They're just, I mean, everywhere, crawling around. Every crack is alive with these giant, frigging, creepy, I don't know if those are locusts, cicadas, what? I mean, it's a shame because look how cool this setup is. Four bathtubs, there's even a little carpet to get out of the tub and dry your feet. You can, there's taps on each tub to turn on the hot water. You can have a real nice soak, but you wouldn't be alone. Oh, gross. Yikes. I mean, I'm sleeping in my car, so it wouldn't really, I probably would still stay the night here. I would just be real careful when I got up to pee. But my sister, is sleeping in a tent. And I'm pretty sure she's not gonna wanna sleep out here in a tent with all these friggin' bugs jumping around everywhere. Oh, God, like inside this concrete thing, I bet there's a whole swarm of them. Let's look real quick. 
uh, well, I guess it's not seething with them, but there's a few in there. I mean, they're everywhere. They're jumping around, crawling around. I guess it's just the season for them. What a shame. Ugh, I better go talk to my sister and see what she wants to do. She's over there. Uh, I think there might be another hot spring pool she's checking out. Man, what a bummer. I mean, this pool here is probably awesome to soak in. You can see the hot water is bubbling in, coming up, and there's some kind of scum or algae on it, which I don't know, probably isn't too bad. But look at the walls. They're covered in these friggin' giant bugs everywhere. Here comes one close to me. Let me see if I can shoot him. I gotta hold real still. Don't be scared, feller. Oh my god, these things are everywhere. This is a freaking horror show. There's thousands of them, I think. Uh, if not thousands, there's probably hundreds. Oh, all up in the source. I guess that's the source back there. Everywhere. What a shame. This hot spring is supposed to be like 104 degrees, too. Nice and hot. It would be a real nice soak if it wasn't for all these guys. I mean, golly, look how beautiful this desert is. And look here, could have even had a little campfire. Okay, yikes, we are getting the heck out of there. That was not a place to spend the night. It was creepy. They were, I mean, I'm not exaggerating and I'm not sure you'll be able to tell from the footage, but they were big and meaty and there was hundreds, probably thousands of them. We're hoping that it's just because there was a water source there and if we drive to this other campsite we scouted out, there might be fewer, but there's a creek at this other place, so they might be there too. And we're running out of daylight, so we don't have much time to figure this out. Better step on it. I sure do wish I was sitting in a hot spring in the desert looking at that moon rather than standing on this balcony. Wah, wah, wah. Okay, unfortunately, we drove up to the other camping spot that we had marked and it too was overrun with those friggin' locusts or cicadas or whatever they are. I guess it's just they're in season, you know, it's that time of year. And there was actually a lot of them at the campsite, so. We could tell my sister felt bad because she hasn't been traveling around with me much lately and so this is, she finally had her chance to come on a trip with me and, you know, she's staying in a tent to save gas money, we're traveling together and, you know, she could tell she felt bad not wanting to camp there, but I totally understood. If I was sleeping in a tent, I probably wouldn't have wanted to camp there either. Sleeping in your car, it's different, you know, you're off the ground, you can close the doors, the bugs aren't going to get in. In a tent, it's a different story. So. Here we are at the Santa Fe Inn in Winnemucca. I'm going to show you our room and then you tell me how much you think we paid for this. All right, here we are. Good old number 209. It's a non-smoking room. And it's got, it's actually pretty nice. Uh, two queen size beds. My sister's on that one. Got to be real careful not to show her. Then there's my bed over there. And yes, by the way, I do travel with my own satin pillowcase. <laughs> That's why you may have noticed in some of my videos, I always have this pink satin pillowcase. You know, you gotta have some luxuries when you're traveling. Anyway, this is, uh, like I said, non-smoking. It's got a refrigerator, it's got a little television, mirror. It's got a very interesting layout, actually. So it's got this little, I guess, lounge area here in between the two beds, and then the bathroom is Really an interesting design. It's got this weird open, two sinks, and a microwave. <laughs> and this little like bench, closet, full length mirror. And let's check out the bathroom. Oh wow, look at this. <laughs> oh look, a phone in the bathroom. Ha! <laughs> yeah, just pretty standard, but clean, serviceable. So how much would you expect to pay for a room like this in Winnemucca, Nevada on a Monday night in mid-July? Well, it is summer travel season and I think the mines in this area are booming. So a lot of miners stay in these places too uh, for extended periods. So a lot of rooms tend to get booked up here and it drives the rate up. 
Last time I stayed in Winnemucca was right after New Year's. I stayed at Motel 6 and it was only 53 bucks. This place was $70 plus tax. Really not bad, I feel like, for what you're, we're getting. It does suck to wimp out already the first night of my trip. Like I said, my sister hasn't been traveling with me much lately. I was really looking forward to camping with her and having Frito pie and the whole thing, but we already ate that Indian food anyway, so. It just kind of sucks to start out the trip the very first night having to, you bugs, run to a motel room. I don't consider myself a wuss, but it was extenuating circumstances, so. Hey, guess what? <laughs> We're gonna make the best of it, but. I don't think I'll be going back to Kyle Hot Spring anytime soon. I do definitely want to go check it out again sometime. I need to do some research into these locusts or cicadas and see. I'm sure it's like a cyclical thing or a seasonal thing and try to go back sometime when they are not in season. Okay, it's the next morning and guess what? My sister did some research last night and she figured out that what we thought were locusts were actually this thing called Mormon crickets. And apparently it's a perfectly commonplace plague they suffer periodically out here. <laughs> but even worse, what we saw was actually pretty moderate compared to some of these infestations where they swarm in in the thousands and they can't fly because they don't have wings. So they just sort of hop along on the ground almost in formation like blanketing the entire ground, wreaking total devastation everywhere they go because they eat everything in their way. I mean everything, they even eat each other. That's why they march in formation, I guess, the crickets in the front keep going because they're afraid that if they stop, the crickets coming up behind them will eat them. No kidding, they cannibalize each other. I guess they're just trying to eat whatever protein and salt they come across, including each other, and it's no joke. My sister said she saw it at the hot spring last night. She saw them eating each other. Anyway, as bizarre as it sounds, I guess it's just a part of life out here. And I mean, farmers do whatever they can to keep them from devastating their entire crops. And it's really hard for, especially farmers that are certified organic and can't use any pesticides. I mean, I was reading about it last night and sometimes they'll even blast really loud rock music out of boom boxes to try to, I guess, use the vibrations to keep the bugs from eating their crops because if they get into their fields they're screwed and this all shows you how totally out of touch I am with how our food is grown because I had no idea this kind of thing was going on in this day and age I thought this was like something from the Bible days and speaking of the Bible the reason they're called Mormon crickets they're actually not crickets they're a, a shield backed Katie did but they call them Mormon crickets because hmm, a plague of them ate all of the, I think the first or second harvest of the Mormon pioneers that first came out and settled Utah. They lost everything to a plague of these things. What we saw was mild. I can't imagine seeing thousands of them marching in formation, just eating each other, eating everything. I mean, the, the clerk at the hotel front desk actually said they even eat human flesh. Okay, I wasn't able to confirm that online, but I'm just telling you that's what he told me. Either way, I'm really glad I didn't make my poor sister camp at that hot spring. But weirdly, I do find the whole thing really fascinating in a creepy way, and I'm, I'm not altogether bummed with the way things turned out. It was actually kind of interesting. Except for the fact that I was in such a friggin' hurry last night to try to find a place to camp before dark that wasn't infested with bugs that I was hauling well, I was hauling you know what down the road and I hit this poor bird. I mean, I don't know what kind of bird it is. I've had, I mean, it's stuck in my grill and I've had a couple of different people tell me today. One guy said he thought it was a hawk. Another guy said uh, he thought it was a kind of owl. I don't know, it's really sad. I mean, look at this thing. It's got these beautiful spotted feathers and these poor little legs and talons. Poor head is stuck in my grill. I feel horrible about it. I'm an animal lover, I don't like killing things but I didn't mean to do it and my plan is to try to find a place to bury it and give it a respectful burial but anyway my sister and I planned to go to another hot spring actually we plan to go to a bunch of different hot springs up here all week and camp as we go and I'm not sure if these friggin Mormon crickets they might be all over this part of the country I mean we've seen them a lot of places we've been driving it's freaky so we're on our way to the next hot spring on our agenda and Fingers crossed, it isn't totally in 
infested with them. Stay tuned.